Hey folks, welcome back to the off-grid workshop where you find both of us up a ladder working on a roof here. This is actually my van, my motorhome. And one of the things that I've noticed over the last few weeks slash months, maybe the last year really, is that the solar just hasn't been performing as well as it should. And I have on here around about 550 watts of solar. And I just have not been getting the output that I should be getting from this. So I knew that something's been up, but it's just been on the back burner, just not a priority to deal with. And this week had a bit of time, so pulled it into the workshop here to have a look and to try and figure out what is going on. And uh, I'll explain quickly. So the setup that I have is this and that are two 180 watt panels. Those are two that I added after I got the van. The van came with these two here, which are two 100 watt panels. And I have no idea the age of these two panels. They could be eight, 10 years old, who knows? I think they've been on here a while. They're olden panels, but I don't know how old they are. Anyway, figured out just by process of elimination, those two new panels are only about two years old, probably, and they're working great. So they're connected in series and they are producing uh, in here, like 27 volts. I'm sure that if I pulled it outside, the voltage would be much higher, obviously, with sunlight. Obviously, here, they're just reading off the lights, that sort of thing. So uh, then I went to these two panels, which were also connected in series, and found that they were only producing about 7 volts or thereabouts, which is obviously a concern. They're probably 12-volt panels. I'm not sure... Uh, but yeah, so that's that was automatically we're like, okay, there's something funny going on there, the fact that they're only producing 7 volts. And yes, we're inside, but I'd expect them to produce more. Disconnected them, and I'll show you what we found. So let me turn the camera on. So Dad's just putting the multimeter onto the two wires that come out of this outside panel here. And what we'll see is that the panels are producing almost nothing, not even one volt, this particular panel. If we do the same for that panel, the middle one, it's producing about eight volts. So clearly there's an issue with this panel and it's probably faulty, probably died. Uh, maybe just due to age or something like that, but anyway, that is what we are working with currently. So we're gonna pull this panel off and here's the method for how we are pulling the panel out. So if you've ever seen panels that are fixed just by uh, using Cycloflex with a bracket that you can't get to where, the, bra where the, the bracket is mounted to the panel, this is essentially what you have to work with. So we've just got like some very fine wire, cheese wire, piano wire, whatever you want to call that. And essentially it's just a case of working this backwards and forwards. And as you can see, it uh, cuts through that Cycloflex pretty well. And if you hit a point where it gets a lot of friction and a lot of resistance, for example, it's hitting up against aluminum or steel or a metal of some sort, then the wire will heat up to the point where it'll eventually snap. But this is just cutting through this pretty well. And, I'm, and these panels have been on here for a long time. This Cycloflex is so good, it's, it'll, it'll last the life of the panels for sure. But this is essentially what you have to do to get these panels off when they're glued on like this. So we'll just work this off until we get the whole panel off and then do the same on the back. All right, roof needs a clean, but panel is loose. So let's lift this guy off and take it outside. Oh my goodness, look at that mess underneath there. <laughs> Getting the new panels ready to put on the van. This is our favorite way to prep panels and how we mount them. We've covered this in another video, but we use these PV Logic Aero brackets. It's a really nice surface area for sticking down with Psychoflex. And then we mount them using these self-tapping, self-drilling screws. And it turns out super neat. They um, a little bit of give on these brackets, but overall, they're a really neat job. On this particular, because we're gonna be putting one panel across the front of the van sideways, I'm gonna put another bracket on the long edge. Usually I would be happy with just the front and back if we were putting them lengthways because these panel, these brackets have such a big surface area and because of the shape of them, it doesn't allow air to go underneath the panel and catch. But because we're gonna be putting a panel sideways, 
and they're fairly long panels, 180 watt panels. We're going to put a, a bracket on the side of the one that goes horizontally or sideways across the van. All right, so here we are. Got the first panel up. We've taken up the gland and got the wiring out there so we can redo that. We have prepped for the second panel. So this is how we do it. We always dry fit it. We've done a video on this, but we always put the panel on, mark where it's gonna go so we can then etch the roof using a bit of sandpaper. And then we clean it using isopropyl alcohol. And then the final step is to use Psychoflex activator. And so this panel is gonna have a bracket there at the back, one here at the front, and then one here. Usually we don't put one in the middle, but because this is right at the front of the vehicle and sideways, like I mentioned, we're gonna put one across there just for extra safety. But yeah, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. There's gonna be solar all over this roof. It's looking good. So we've got everything installed. So new panel on the front there, new panel here, and then obviously the two or three old ones. So that panel is now on its own and it goes through here. These two wires, so I wired that in, so it's gonna be on its own charge controller. The other four are all matching panels in terms of their capacity. So they are wired in series. And coming through on this line here, which is gonna to go to the charge controller that I have in here currently. So making really good use of the roof real estate here. One thing we could do if we really wanted to go all out was we could put another 100 watt panel there and then we have, would have literally used up <laughs> all of the free space on this roof. But yeah, there we go. We um, have gone from having a dead panel here, which was pulling the whole array. So before I had about 560 watts, I think. Um, and so obviously with that one panel here that was pulling everything down, I was getting very little, like 40 watts, uh, even on a good day. Whereas now, once I've got those three panels clean, obviously with these two being new and clean, I'm going to get over 800 watts probably out of the setup. So yeah, had to go a little bit overboard with the Psychoflex here, mainly just because where we removed the old gland, uh, it scraped up the roof a little bit. So rather than having that, although it's aluminium, rather than having it exposed, uh, I've gone overboard and just really piled on the Psychoflex here to avoid any leaks or anything like that. Also, because this panel, we couldn't really put the panel much further over towards the side here because we needed a gap there for putting the wires in and stuff like that. Uh, and the panel is as far over as you can go. The gland is sitting kind of on the edge of this uh, roof seal here. So wasn't much I could do with this as far as making it closer. And that's about as tight and compact as possible. Looks quite messy but I just piled the Psychoflex on there because I don't want it leaking. And I wanted to cover all the exposed aluminum. Although aluminum doesn't necessarily rust like steel does, uh, I don't want spots where it can corrode and where water can, can get in and stuff. So I'd rather just cover that up completely. But yeah, there we go, huge upgrade. So here we are, finished wiring up everything in here. So we can see all the wires coming through the roof there into a couple of circuit breakers so that there's protection and also the opportunity to isolate the panels if we need to. So obviously each array of panels is on a different isolator. Wires then run behind all of this trim. And if we have a look in here, the wires then run along the top there with, the other, with other wires that were put in uh, previously for the other solar. And we've put the new charge controller just here. So for that single panel, I've gone for a 7510 MPPT smart solar. And I've plugged in a USB uh, to V direct cable to this uh, port here, the this um, thingy strip. And then that brings us up to being able to see everything on our Raspberry Pi. So Smart Solar 1 is the original solar panel, 100 watts. Smart Solar 2 is the big array with all of the panels that we fitted yesterday. So looking pretty good, pretty keen to see how this thing performs and uh, see how we get on with it. And one final look on the roof here. Everything's looking good, just need to tidy up, get some of this rubbish away. But yeah, uh, I need to clean the old panels because they're pretty dirty. Been up here for a few years on this van. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good, pretty pleased. So there we go, folks. If you are struggling with your solar on your van, especially if you had a big array like I had on this van, so I had over 500 watts originally, uh, and 
I was getting like even on good summer days, I was getting max of like 50, 60 watts. So I knew something was up. And so I guess that's just a good uh, lesson learned there that if something doesn't seem right, then it's worth investigating. And it's also worth just considering when you're installing a system that you do it in a way that things can be uh, looked at in the future and you can get into stuff and, and investigate and, and problem solve and troubleshoot all that sort of stuff. So for example, rather than just cutting wires and splicing them in and stuff like that, try and use MC4 connectors where possible because that means that you can just simply disconnect them, check if what the voltage is and do some troubleshooting. Uh, which is what I was able to do. And then also, in terms of an upgrade, this was way easier because the other two or three panels all had MC4 connectors on them. So when it came to actually installing the, the two new ones, it was just a case of linking in the two new ones with the old system, uh, maybe a couple of extensions here and there, but on the whole, it was pretty simple and, and easy to do. So definitely recommend forward thinking as far as those sort of things are concerned. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. And we will update you in the summer and as the year progresses as to how we get on because we have over 800 watts of solar on this van now. I think we're at like 840 or possibly 860 watts now. So it's a little bit ridiculous, but uh, pretty keen. You can see how that goes. Cheers. And that's looking much better, folks. 140 watts in total. So that top number is the total number. Then you got the little numbers. So 14 watts from the original panel, 130 from the new panel, so the four panels and so it's looking much better and it's pretty overcast dreary day today so if i open this door you can see not a huge amount of sunlight pretty overcast naturally soda is not going to be that productive but looking way better i mean that's already more than it was producing before so pretty pleased with that so yeah there we go